Welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ and non-believers alike. I would like to welcome you once again to our Bible studies in the book of Revelation. Today, we're going to be studying in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. I am your speaker, Carlos, minister of the Lord Jesus Christ and witness of his gospel. Today, we're going to be in depth with the assembly of Laodicea. This assembly is called the lukewarm church, but I call it the woke church because that's what the woke church is now. The church is just not loving Christ, neither ignoring Christ. It's in a stage in where it's nor hot nor cold and it's just not doing the job that's supposed to be doing, which is declaring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the truth of his gospel all around the world. This is the woke church. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3, is a special blessing for the reader and also for the hearer. And it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. Once again, let's review this real quick. There is one reader, so the blessing goes to the reader, which is singular. And to the hearers, that is plural. To many that are hearing this word of God in this book, you are specially blessed. And of course, you must keep those things, which is plural, written therein. Because the time is at hand. And today is more than ever visible in terms of how close to the end we are. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. We have been getting familiar with the book. Today is no difference. And so we know the purpose of the book, which was and is to unveil. That's what the meaning of Revelation is, to unveil Jesus Christ to the world. The author of this book the human author is the Apostle John, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The time in where the book was written was in between the year of 95 and 96 after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. The location in where the book was written was in the Patmos Island. That was when Domitian, which was the emperor of Rome, exiled the Apostle John due to the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Apostle John. The intended target, those are Israel, the people of God, the 12 tribe of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacobs. Let me make clear, the assembly, the body of Christ, which is the second intended target of the book, are not in any way, shape or form, replacing Israel in any particular way. There are two different entities in the prophecies of God and in the plan of God. Israel has essential part on the plan of God, and so is the body of Christ, which is the assembly, the ecclesia. And then, of course, at the end, those are the Gentiles, which is those ones that have not given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are still what is known in the book of Revelation as the earth dwellers. The introduction to chapter 1, we already seen it on throughout our beginning of the Bible studies series. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 19, what is called and what is known as the verse of content. And we will see that later on in our Bible studies. The final destination. This is the final destination for the human after his or her first or second death, whether you are a male or female. The humankind was created by God and formed from the dust of the ground. It was given a body by the hands of God. Then God gave him the spirit of life. He blew on him and gave him the spirit of life like any other creation of God. But among these components, he also gave him to the humankind what is known as the soul. And in the first death, as we know it, is when the human body is separated from the spirit and the soul. This is known the first death. So it's dust to dust when the human's body is going back to where it came from. 
which is to the dust. And the spirit and the soul are would be resting when the Lord comes for the assembly on the Harpaso. The spirit goes on the moment in where the Harpaso happened, and the spirit and the soul will be taken in a snap, in a split of a second, because that's what the Harpaso will be. The rapture is, is called the rapture or Harpaso. And the spirit is separated from the soul. The spirit goes back to God who created us and gave us the spirit of life. And the soul, which is the third component of the humankind and what makes you you and only you. No one else is like you. So the soul is going to either the lake of fire of heaven. What is the difference? You go into heaven as long as you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, your heart, your soul, and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ as your only Savior while you were human here on earth. If you did not did so, then you go to the lake of fire. In chapter 20, verse 10, indicates that the dragon, serpent of old, the devil, Satan, which is one entity, the false prophet, which is an entity from the beast from the earth, and the beast from the sea. Those three elements are going to be in the lake of fire and thrown to the lake of fire. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 and 14, says as follows, And the sea gave up the death in it, and the death and Hades gave up the death in them. And they were each judge according to their works in other words those souls that have not were given while you were human to the lord jesus christ through the conviction that he was your only savior and only through him you can go to the father because you cannot go to the father but through him if you did not do so then your soul at the moment of the judgment, the books are going to be open. The books of life, which belongs to the Lamb, which is the Son of God, our Savior Jesus Christ. The books of works. And you, if you have given, if you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be seen through the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are going to paradise with the Lord God because you are written in the book of life which belongs to the Lamb. If you have not given your life to the Lord God Jesus Christ, our Savior as your only Savior, then your soul will be judged based on your works. You will be found guilty. Hades and death are also going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Verse 14 says as follows, And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So when they, the Hades, death, dragon, serpent of all, devil, Satan, false prophet, and the beast of the sea, and every soul that did not and was not given to the Lord Jesus Christ before the second death as your only Savior, if you have not given your heart to the Lord, you will be judged based on your works and you are end up on the lake of fire. I will recommend to every one of you to read the following. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26, book of James chapter 5 verse 20, book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 47, book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 11, book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 6, and book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. The meaning of Revelation is unveiling, and that's the purpose of the book, to unveil Jesus Christ to humanity, to the creation of God. As we mentioned before, at the beginning of this Bible study, in chapter 1, verse 19 of the book of Revelation, is what is known as the verse of content. If you have a book, you wrote a book, or you are reading or read a book, you will notice that at the beginning of the book, there is a page of content. We tell you what it is in the book and where to find it. There is no difference in the book of Revelation. This verse, verse 19, in chapter 1, is what is known as the verse of content, which it says, Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. That phrase, shall be hereafter, in the Greek is metatauta. To make this in perspective, in a sign, in a way that you can see it visually, let's imagine that the Bible is divided in sections as it is but it, for this purpose only 
So from the book of Genesis to the book of Malachi, we could say that is things which thou hast seen. And then things which are, we can determine and say that is from the book of Matthew to the book of Jude. And then things which shall be hereafter should be the book of Revelation. I understand. You might don't see it that way. I respect that. This is just to make you see this verse in a little bit more clear way. So let's expand to this. If we extend a line, which we're going to call it the human timeline, and we take as a point of reference the birth, ministry, death of the Lord Jesus Christ and ascension of, his, of our Lord Savior to his Father. As the historian are using the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ to determine for generations the before and after of the human timeline. In this case, if you notice, I also added the birth of the assembly as a point of reference and is in red in that little square for you to notice. Using this timeline, then we can say the things which thou hast seen are things from the beginning of time all the way down to the late first century. And then things which are, are things that happened on the late first century, which was when the Apostle John was exiled to Patmos, and is all the way down to the birth and time of the assembly right before and at the point of the Harpaso, or the rapture. Because in the rapture, the assembly is going to be taken out of earth and so with it also will be the holy spirit is going to be taken to the holy father at that moment will open the doors for the uh, son of perdition to reveal and by doing so that will be the beginning and end of creation as we know it which are things which shall be hereafter things which thou hast seen could represent the events that had happened to the people of Israel from the beginning when Abraham left Ur of Chaldeans and became the father of Israel to the moment of the beginning of the exile of the Apostle John to Patmos Island. Things which are, we can say, are the events were happening at the moment that the Apostle was in Patmos Island during the vision and covering all the way through the lifespan of the assembly until the moment of the Harpaso, in where not only the people that being given to the Lord Jesus Christ, their hearts and their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ while they were alive, they will be taken. Those ones that are dead, they will res be resurrected. And those ones that are alive, they will be taken, meeting in the clouds, and with them would be the Holy Spirit taken as well, giving and opening the doors for the son of perdition to reveal, and which things that shall be hereafter will be the events in the near future. Immediately after the Harpaso happened and the Holy Spirit is taken with the assembly out of this earth, that future will be the beginning of the end of times. Now, things which thou hast seen, we could imagine that is from the war in heaven, which was when Lucifer, which was one of the, the angel of light, and he tried to be just like God, trying to take God's and be like God's in heaven. And one third of the angels followed him. They were thrown out of heaven because there were no place for them to be in heaven. And once they were thrown to earth, those became fallen angels. Then, all the way down, it comes that through the resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. At the moment that the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Savior, is resurrected and ascending, the Holy Spirit is brought down for the assembly to have the power of God, the Counselor. From that moment in where the assembly received the the counselor, which is the, sec the third person of God, the Holy Spirit. The assembly is born and throughout that assembly time, all the way down to the moment in where the assembly is taken to the heavens in the Harpaso. And with it, 
is going to be taken also the Holy Spirit out of this earth, given as a result a place for the son of perdition to reveal and to raise, to continue against the humanity, to bring his power against humanity. And that power is given by God to that son of perdition to reveal because by himself doesn't have any power, but given by God. And by doing so, will be all the way through until the end of times. That would be also when the millennium will come, when the Lord Jesus Christ will establish his kingdom on earth, in where all the nations are coming to pay tribute and to worship God and to worship and pay tribute also in Jerusalem, in the temple, and the throne of David, which is going to be sitting on, and also pay tribute and respect the people of God, Israel. During the moment in where the assembly was born, the assembly has different phases. In chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Revelation, the seven assemblies represent the lifespan of the assembly of Christ throughout history. The first one is called Ephesus, and that would be uncovering the years of 33 after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, all the way down to 100 after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was called the Apostolic Church. The second one was Smyrna. It was from 100 after the death to 312 after the death, and it's called the Persecuted Church. The third one was Pergamos. Pergamos was from 312 to 606, and it was called the Perverted Church or the Marriage Church. I like to bring a point in this moment in before pergamos time the assembly which are the people that follow jesus christ the followers of the way they were meeting at home they were teaching the gospel of the lord jesus christ at home to their family members to their neighbors anyone who were meeting and to know the lord jesus christ they went to their homes to be taught it was until 380. Once again, it was until 380 after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is during the time of the Pergamos assembly, that it was prohibited, it was unlawful for the people and followers of the way to meet at home to do their teachings. The next one would be Tathara, is 606 after the death to 1520 after the death, and it's called the Pagan Church. Then is Sardis, from 1520 to 1750, and it's called the Dead Church. And after Sardis, it was Philadelphia, from 1750 after the death to 1900, the Love Church. Let me make also another point clear. It was not until the Philadelphia Assembly when the followers of the way were allowed to start over again and to teach in their homes the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sardis represented the Reformation. Nevertheless, even throughout the Reformation, the people of followers of the way, they were also unlawful for them to teach the gospel at home. Even throughout the Reformation, many Christians and followers of the way, if they were teaching the gospel of the Lord at home, they would be persecuted and prosecuted, even burned to the stake because of that. But it was not until the time of Philadelphia period, which was the Love Church, able to congregate as they pleased and where they pleased. Then we have Laodicea. Laodicea is from 1900 to the present. And guess what, my dear brothers and sisters? People call them the lukewarm church. I call it, yes, the woke church. The book of Acts of the Apostles covers the first 30 plus years of the assembly. From there on, the book of Revelation covers the rest of the history of the assembly with the seven assemblies in chapter 2 and chapter 3. So if you are a follower of the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior, you have given your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the most important part for you to know in the book of Revelation is chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. We are not going to be around after chapter 3 and on. 
In other words, a chapter four and on is for the earth dwellers to deal with and the 144,000 which are chosen from the people of Israel, the people of God, and those ones that are going to be converted by the 144,000, which they are going to be decapitated, give their lives for them to receive salvation. Nevertheless, no one goes to the Father but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Once they are with their bloody vest or garment, the Bible stated in Revelation also, and I will prove it to you, that they will go through the blood of the Lord for them to cleanse their garments. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1 is the vision of Christ. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 3, they represent the seven assemblies of the body of Christ throughout the human history. From chapter 4 to chapter 22 are things which follow, or the metatauta. If you are familiar with the book of Daniel, I am sure you have read chapter 9, verse 24, and throughout 27. That's what is called the 62 plus 7, 69 weeks of Daniel. What it does is takes that period of time through the moment in where the Lord Jesus Christ was coming to the city in the donkey with the palm trees, Hosanna to the Lord. That would be exactly to that day. Then it comes the 70th week, which is in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. That book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, or the 69 weeks, is what is, or what we call, things which thou hast seen. Things which shall be hereafter, which is from chapter 4 to 22 in the book of Revelation, is the 70th week of Daniel in chapter 9, verse 27. What is in between that gap in between the 69th week and the 70th week is what is called the grace period, which is when the body of Christ history covers. We're going to see in these assemblies their historical data, location, date, historical significance, structure of the letters. Each letter has a structure and elements in that letter particular to the letter. Then we see the pros and the cons of this assembly. Each one of the assemblies has pros and cons depending on which one is. Two of them, they don't have pros. Two of them, they don't have cons. How this letter, whatever letter would be, apply to the assemblies in the timeline of the human history. And believe me, it does. You will notice that if you interchange or remove one of these assemblies in a different way, this will not apply. The Holy Spirit brought the assemblies in this chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Revelation in a way that describes perfectly to the T the history of the assembly, even today with Laodicea, which is the woke church. Hallelujah. The structure of the letter, elements in the letter in Laodicea. We have the command. There is a divine command to the angel of the assembly. We will see later what I mean by the angel of the assembly. This is not under no circumstances. Let no one to tell you or to put in your head that this is a human as we speak. No, it's not. He's not a leader. He's not a pastor. Is not a prophet, is not a humankind. This is an angel, an angel of the realm of the army of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Then there is the divine command to the Apostle John, the author of the book, because the Lord Jesus Christ used the element, human element, to bring the knowledge of this book to the human element. Then it comes the introduction, the pros on the letter, the cons on the letter. Some of these letters, they don't have pros. Some of these letters, they don't have cons. Two of them don't have pros. Two of them don't have cons. Then it comes the promise to the overcometh and he that have an ear. The first three letters in the seventh assemblies, he that have an ear is before the promise to the overcometh. But it is not until after the third assembly that the position of the promise to the overcometh comes before that he that have an ear. In my personal opinion, and it's a humble opinion, is because they are going to go through so much in their timeline that they need to have 
a goal that they can reach for them to continue on on their path. A, let's call it like a break, like a like a breathing time that they can just relax for a moment and continue the moment of life. These are all the elements on the assemblies, especially in Laodicea as well. Now, in this case, Laodicea is called the lukewarm church. I call it the woke church. And it's from 1900 to the present time. 1900 after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ to this present time. And remember, in Revelation 3.16 says, Thou art lukewarm, nor cold, nor hot, so I will spew you out of my mouth, it says the Lord. Historical data, location, dates, historical significance. The city of Laodicea it means ruled by the people. This is very important for you to understand. Our lives are not being ruled and should not be ruled by people. Our lives should be ruled by God, by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our commander. He is our savior. He is our Lord. He is our king. This city was founded by Antiochus II during the years of 261 to 263 BC and dedicated to his wife, Laodice. It was located in the Asia Minor province of Roman Empire, which today is known as Turkey. Today is located near the modern city of Turkey of Denizli, in a narrow valley of the small rivers Asopus and Caprus. It ways lay on a major commercial route, and neighboring cities were Colosse to the west and to the south Hierapolis, and to the east was Ephesus. The original name was Diospolis, or City of Zeus, also was known as Rhodas. Many of the inhabitants were Jews. Cicero, the historian, indicated that Flaccus confiscated the amount of nine kilograms of gold. Today is that equivalent to more than a half of a million dollars in annual basis for the use of the temple in Jerusalem. So every year it was taking half a million dollars from their Jews residents to the temple every year. After 188 BC became a Roman territory and received the title of free city, which means with autonomy and full control of the local government, but with the clause of being supervised by a Roman epistates or curator. It became famous for the anointing spices used for some eyes diseases or infections and for the production of black wool. It was chief city of 24 total cities, including itself, and there were rec records of holding assises in these locations due to the importance of the city. In other words, they used to do judgments and judges and, uh, in this particular city. The proliferation of the Greek culture and influence of it in its literature, science, and philosophy was renowned. The main deities were Zeus, Aesculapius, Apollo, and Roman emperors, which they were considered and worshipped as gods. Aesculapius was also the god of medicine. Located as the other major cities in the area, suffer of a major seismic events and refusing the Roman Empire help pridefully was revealed by the affluent members of the community of Laodicea. During the Turks and Mongolians invasions, the city suffered dramatically to the point of destruction. In the epistle of the Colossians, chapter 4, verse 16, the apostle Paul instructed that his letter to be sent to the Laodiceans assembly, which also is instructed to the Colossians to read the epistle from the Laodiceans, which is an unknown existence. In verse 16, in chapter 4 of the book of Colossians, says, And when this epistle is read among you, because that it be read also in the church of Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. In front of you is the, sev the seven churches of Revelation's map, and where the red arrow is pointing at, that is the city of Laodicea. This is what is known today 
as Turkey, which was the Asia Minor province of Rome. And here is Jerusalem. Structure of the letter, elements in the letter, divine command. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, I will be once again very specific. This divine command, and to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, is given directly and specifically to a member of the realm of the army of God, the angels of army of God. If you go in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 through 13, it says as follows. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come to thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remain there with the king of Persia. In this particular book and chapter, there was Daniel praying for an answer that he was asking in prayer. Immediately the Daniel was on prayer, the answer was sent. But an entity, a spiritual entity of the kingdom of Persia interceded. And the archangel came to help this messenger of God. So as you noticed, these messengers to the assemblies are only angels and members of the kingdom of the realm of the army of God, that they can go on war and it could stop any event that comes against them. This also tells you that every single kingdom on earth, every single nation has a spiritual di diabolic entity that represents them. The second divine command was right. That divine command was, yes, given to a human, which was the Apostle John. Then it comes the divine title. And the divine title is different in every single one of these assemblies. The divine title, it says, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The Amen it is a word in the strong numbers, G281, which means verily, truly, amen. At the end of sentences may be paraphrased by so let it be. So he's truly, he's verily, he's the amen. Then he says in Numbers 5.22, very important chapter and very important verse. And he talks about the first time that you will see in this particular verse, you will see the word amen to be used. And this says in Numbers 5.22, And these waters that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels, and make thy belly to swell, and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. What it, what it was is, in the law, it was this was exposing the punishment for an unfaithful woman. If the woman was unfaithful, she was taken to the temple, To the tabernacle was given water mixed with the dust of the tabernacle and it was given to her to drink if she was saying the truth and clean then it would not be affecting her but if she was lying and she take the waters then she would be in deep trouble and she would die from a very bad sickness faithful and true witness In Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 5, it says, Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us, if we do not even according to all things, for the which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. I want you to notice here the way in where true and faithful are. Faithful is the second one, and true is is the first one but in the divine command where the lord jesus christ introduced himself faithful is the first one and true witness is the second one the beginning of the creation of god that does not mean that god was created it means what he created so he jesus christ is the beginning of the creation of god in the book of john the apostle john chapter 1 
verses 1, 2, and 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. That creation, which is number 3 on John chapter 1, is exactly what is talking about in Genesis 1. The pros and cons of this assembly concerns the pros. Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 says, I know thy works. The Lord Jesus Christ knows everything about you and I. Everything. There is nothing hidden for the Lord. Nothing. And in the book of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 26, verse 16 through 20, it tells us that we must be ready for action. We must be obedient. Must be a minister of the Lord which means to be a servant, subordinate, an officer, an assistant of inferior rank, an agent, an instrument. In the diplomat rank, you are below to the ambassador, which means you are always under the rank. You are a servant of the people and of the Lord. You must be a witness of the gospel of the Lord, and on any other divine command given to you, you must be ready. There is nothing else said. There are no, no pros, nothing else. Nevertheless, when we go to the cons, he says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, 16, and 17, and 18, says, That thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white remnant, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 says, And the eyes of them, that was Adam and Eve, both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they so fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And we need to remember this is the lukewarm, nor cold, nor hot. The woke church. Pros and cons, concerns. In today's world, this generation and this assembly, in the one that we're living at the present time, they have accepted Catholic and Protestant leaders to unite and start what they call a reformation. They are accepting all religious as one, one single body. Islamics, Hindus, all kinds of idolaters and, and, and all kinds of demonic religions into one body. Now, you need to remember for as beautiful it sounds, this is the beginning of what the Bible stated that is going to be one world religion. Then we see recently also that the Reformation Day, it says Protestant Christians embrace LGBTQ diversity 500 years after Martin Luther King. Here is telling you how the assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ is accepting the LGBTQ when the Bible state that if you, that any, any homosexualism is against the word of God. If you are friends with the world, you are enemy of God. That's a sin, and a sin is a sin. We also will notice recently that the school in Virginia, in this case, uh, opened up a satanic club. That club is for the children to be part of it. This is what our assembly today is accepting. And we are keeping quiet and not doing our job of going against this and telling enough is enough. This is against the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are not going to be part of it. But it's prophetical. And this is why I call this assembly the woke church. Concerns. 
As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Love is a strong number 5368. Is to love of friendship. Regard with affection. Share it or kiss as a friend. Rebuke is a strong number 1651. Is to reprove, to rebuke, discipline, to expose, show to be guilty. Chasten. Is a strong number. 3811 is to discipline, to educate, to train more severely, to chastise. Zealous is a strong number. 2206 to be jealous, to be jealous to, of a person, to be eager for, to be eager to pros, to possess of a thing. And repent, which The strong number 3340, which means 30, from the 3326 and 3539, to think differently or afterwards, to reconsider, to repent, to see your wrongdoing. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. I will stand at the door. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 8 through 10, it says, And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door, and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. In the book of Luke, Chapter 13, verse 24, 27 says, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not, hence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast thought in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not, hence ye are. Depart from me, O ye workers of iniquity. If Jesus Christ, in this case, in verse 20, he is standing outside your door as it was in exodus 33 verse 8 through 10 god himself was at the tabernacle door and the people saw how and where he was so it's for you to get access to the lord into your home and into your life open your heart and give your heart to the lord the lord will step to the door he will knock at your door the lord is outside your residence the lord Make the call. You must hear the call of the master. If you answer his call, you must open the door from the inside. He will come to your house. He will eat supper with you and you with him. The most intimate moment of your life with the Lord. So he stand outside your door. He knock at your door, which is, by the way, When he's knocking at your door, the Lord is in the outside of your residence waiting for you to respond. The Lord make the call. You must hear the call of the master. He says that his sheep hear and recognize the voice of the shepherd. Open the door. If you answer his call, you must open the door from the inside. You will see why from the inside we're talking from at that time that this was happening. The inside doors of a home, it has only the accessibility to unlock it and lock it from the inside of the house. You could not unlock the door from the outside of the house. You must be welcoming the person to your house by unlocking the door of your heart, which is the Lord Jesus Christ coming to your life.
he will come to your house. I will come to him. And he says that he will eat supper with you and you with him, which is the most intimate moment of a family when they get together, eating together and enjoying the presence of each other. When we received recently in this generation what was called the COVID-19 restrictions in the minds of the people, including the assembly, was brought in the circumstances that unless you are vaccinated, you should not accept or admit anyone else's. That unless you have a mask, you cannot admit no one close to you more than six feet around you. So the intimacy that is existing in between humankind and brothers and sisters in Christ is now broken apart. Unless you must not fear, but trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, and understand that he is the salvation of your life and everyone else's. He is the security of your life, the future, the past, and the present. And no one will break that if you are in Christ founded. So don't let no one to fill your heart with fear. This is what is called the woke church. Concerns. Promise to the overcometh. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. It says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. What is an overcometh? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 through 5 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And remember, he also was an overcomer, Jesus Christ himself. In Luke chapter 1, verse 32 to 33 says, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And he is giving you a place with him on his throne. And you know why? Because you open the door for him and give him the part of your throne of your home. Because the throne, your home is your throne. But once you give part of your throne to the Lord in your home and you open your life to the Lord and give your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he will give you and sit you. He says, I grant to sit with me in my throne, he says. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation through him. Elements in the letter. And it comes the he that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. You have an ear, love. You have an ear. Pay attention. This is for you. Time is at hand. In Isaiah 42, 23 says, Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In Act chapter 1, verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Re you hear the word of God, then you receive faith, which is the little power in you. And that power in you opens the doors for you to receive the Holy Spirit. And then you become a witness of the gospel. That is faith. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And that time that is at hand is exactly the time that Isaiah in 42.23 is talking about. Concerns. Legalism. Denial of Christ. Completed work. Nocticism. Denial of Christ's humanity. Caesar worship. Denial of Christ's lordship. False teachings. Traditions not under the scrutiny. Of the word of truth. These are Tirson 
in early church. There are five crowns promised to you as a follower of the way. Crown of life, the crown of righteousness, crown of glory, crown incorruptible, crown of rejoicing. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 and James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You must be persecuted in Christ, otherwise you are not doing your job properly. In James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So you have a lot of patience is because you've been through a lot. If you have no patience, you must be tried to worketh patience. Laodicea. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. The five crowns. Promise crowns to the believers in Christ. Crown of life, which is Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you thee crown of life. The book of James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that loved him. Crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Crown of glory, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive crown of glory that fadeth not away. Crown incorruptible, 1 Corinthians 9.25. And every man that strived for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we and incorruptible crown rejoicing first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are we not even g in the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming hallelujah now we're seeing all the seven assemblies we're going to ephesus devotion not just doctrine do not leave the first love it's not only doctrine it's also devotional life in christ Promise to the overcometh, eat of tree of life, and of course, he that hath an ear. Smyrna, endureth the persecution, even to death. No concerns on this assembly, and he that hath an ear. The promise to the overcometh, you are not going to be hurt on the second death. Pergamus, stand fast against world influence and doctrine. He that hath an ear, and the promise to the overcometh. Mana, white stones, a new name given by the Lord. Tathara, rebuke all pagan practices and customs. Power over the nations and the morning star, that is the he that hath an ear. And of course, promise to the overcometh. Sardis, you are dead. You don't have any commendations. Rest in peace because you are dead. Promise to the overcometh is shall be clothed in white remnant. His name will not be blotted out from the book of life which belong to the Lamb. And his name will be confessed to the Father and the angels by the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, he that have an ear. Philadelphia, holding the ambassadorship position. You must hold in the Lord Jesus Christ's foundation. Don't move. Stay as a good ambassador and a good steward of the Lord. He that have an ear is present and there is no concerns. The uh, promise to the overcometh will keep you out of the hour of the tribulation. And of course, promise to the overcometh. Laodicea, the lukewarm church, the woke church. Once again, the lukewarm church, the woke church, no commendations, promise to the overcometh, will sit with the Lord in his throne and share his glorious overcoming achievement. And of course, promise to the overcometh. Time is at hand. The Lord is coming soon. You must repent. So what is left? Let's bow our heads and let's pray for those ones that wants to be given their lives to the Lord. And if you have given your life to the Lord already and you're a safe and member of the family of Christ, praise the Lord. Please pray with me at this moment for those ones that they want to give their lives to the Lord. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this mercy, for allowing us, oh my Lord, to go through these Bible studies as a one single mind, one single spirit, one single heart minded. Because, oh my Lord, you have been giving us the opportunity to be in this divine appointment for us to learn, to understand, and to perceive and receive this message of salvation. Bring knowledge to those ones that they already knew, oh my Lord, and those ones that are not in you. Bring their hearts to you. Write their names in the book of life, which belongs to you, and bring that this knowledge of the word to their hearts that they can be faithful ambassadors in you that they can use the anointing to their eyes through the holy spirit that they can open their eyes and see the truth that they can buy with the gold that you offer to them oh my lord the garments for their nakedness not to be seen and that they can oh my lord be in the second death away from the lake of fire and placed in the heavenly father's mansions Thank you, O oh my Lord, for these Bible studies. Thank you, O oh my Lord, for all your mercy. Take us away from the woke assembly and put us, O oh my Lord, on the assembly that is founded in the Christ Jesus gospel. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you all this at this very moment. Rashinahi, O Adonai. Thank you, my Lord. I see you soon in my next video. God bless you all.